Hello and welcome to this very special show from Switzerland. And when you think Switzerland, you probably think about Swiss banks, Swiss chocolates like the one I've just devoured, and of course, the pristine and beautiful Swiss Alps. But what you probably miss out on is the fact that this country is also a pioneer in research and technology. And that is exactly what we intend to reflect on this very special show from Switzerland. And we will begin by explaining from what is called the top of Europe how a particular global research station is contributing to research emanating from all across the world. This research is groundbreaking and this is where we begin. Here in these cool climes is a network of laboratories providing evidence of global warming and climate change. Measuring atmospheric carbon dioxide since 31 years and helping determine that the world exceeded the global limit of CO2 in the air in 2015 itself. And they are furious with the US President Donald Trump. Climate change is right here in front of us and the new uh, action by the US government uh, uh, pulling out of the Paris Agreement is uh, totally uh, a denial of what is actually happening right here. So it's here what we see is the Alps. What happened is that uh, the climate change, the climate change is really uh, aggravated. So from the records in the past 100 years, we saw that there is a meltdown of the Alp glacier about 2.5 kilometers. 2.5 kilometers the glacier has melted. Exactly. Nevertheless, the Jungfrau High Altitude Research Station is constantly measuring pollution in new ways. And research here is also contributing to 20 different projects around the world. These are filters. There is 700 liters air per minute pressed through. Okay. That's a filter as we get it new at the Jungfrau Jung. Okay. In 24 hours, a white one becomes totally that's black. Right. And that's the pollution even in a place like Switzerland. And 700 liters is about the amount you breathe. The conditions are just so suitable for research out that's here right, that right. anybody can come out here use this research station yeah. for a hefty cost, of course, I suppose, <laughs> and, you know, get to know more about the world. Now, closely connected to the picturesque Jungfrau research station, which is somewhere behind that haze, is an institute about three to four hours away from here. And that institute is trying to find the answers to the mysteries of killer air pollution, something India could desperately use. The good news is that they already have a close eye on India. IIT Kanpur is working with this crack team of scientists in Wilgen, Switzerland to stop record levels of air pollution in India, which kills an estimated 1.1 million people annually. If you think about the whole Ganges Valley, I mean that's the most polluted place on earth at the moment. Such a big population is exposed. I think it's, it's really important to go there. So we really want to, you know, use our sophisticated in instrumentation in a place where, you know, where it really makes a difference. This team is using a one-of-a-kind instrument that can replicate the pollution in India. That's the UV light, so that, so that will simulate at the end what happens in the atmosphere. When you just go out and measure, you have all the sources at the same time. If you want to really understand which are the sources dominating, we have to study each of them also separately. The goal of the study is to help governments tackle air pollution with irrefutable evidence of what emitters need to be stopped. With this collaboration with the IIT Kanpur, we will be able to give final evidences of sources causing air pollution and uh, maybe we will be able to help in implementing some policies like, you know, the odd even policy of uh, in Delhi. Will schaffen Bison, heute für morgen. This basically means we create knowledge today or tomorrow. This motto really sums up what PSI is attempting to do. And it's not just to find the haze of what constitutes air pollution, but it's also the intention through their research to actually find a permanent solution. Imagine getting from home to work without a carbon footprint, whether you're traveling by car, by bike, by train, by bus, or minibus like we are. Well, Switzerland has envisioned it, put it through testing and is now on the verge of making it a possibility for each one of their citizens. This is the BMW's latest cutting-edge technology. It costs about 25 lakh rupees without import duties, but here in Switzerland, you can use it for a fraction of that cost. So I used to ride a gas guzzler because after driving an electric car, you really don't want to go back. It made me think a lot more about 
the impact our choices have on the environment. High-tech modes such as the i3 BMW car and these electric cycles are at the center of a plan to allow people to use any transport without causing any air pollution. Dimitri Bukhart is a volunteer who was one of 150 others to be selected as a guinea pig for the year-long project. The Swiss Federal Railways is behind the project. The people of Switzerland own it and have themselves planned for a lifestyle without a carbon footprint. And the idea was really to combine environmental modes of transport on the rail and on the road okay. and kind of to offer both in one package. So currently we're in the capital of Switzerland, Bern, and you see two bikes and a friend of mine called Liam. He's the one who's going to be riding a bike that costs about seven, seven lakh Indian rupees. This one costs about well, 5 lakh Indian rupees and that's the cost of the car that I have in New Delhi. A few quick paddles and the battery system helps you reach speeds of up to 45 kilometers per hour. Despite all the air pollution in India, such bikes won't be here anytime soon. You have a, a big battery and to transport a battery by air or by sea, it's a dangerous good. So shipping, shipping of the battery is always the challenge. By 2022, the Green Class project could become a part of Swiss lifestyle. Now mountains cover a whopping 60% of Switzerland's land area. So for easy train travel, they've had to undertake some mountainous projects. Thankfully, the people didn't forget about the environment. Of course, with the help of cutting edge technology. The Gothard Tunnel, the world's longest and most expensive tunneling project. Swiss voters backed a proposal from environmental groups to move all freight travel through Switzerland from road to rail to ensure less pollution. We had the first asking voting just if you want to have the tunnel and then also protecting the environment, protecting the Alps, just to, just to confirm a budget because the whole project cost 23 billion Swiss francs. This is the masterpiece of high engineering. So how did they build the 57 kilometer long tunnel? The learning process over centuries is documented at the Swiss National Railway Museum. Digging a tunnel was never easy. In the late 19th century, this is how it all began. A few baby steps later, machines like this one pulled off what was at that point in time called the project of the century because it was a 15 kilometer long tunnel, the longest in the world. So basically, the wheels of railway technology and drilling had begun to turn. And then finally, with the advent of technology, you had this in the 21st century. A machine that was used to cut through the Alps, basically with the help of this drilling machine at its head. But remember, this is just a replica. This is the real thing, because 66 of the cutters like this one were actually used to drill through the tunnel. And this is the final product. The 57 kilometer long railway tunnel, still the world's longest has made travel from the south to the north of Switzerland a matter of just 17 minutes. India's longest railway tunnel is only 11 km long. So could the Swiss expertise be used in India? Every country has specialists in their fields. But certainly what, what is important is to exchange ideas, to exchange technologies. Switzerland's use of next-gen technology and research isn't just in the fields of mobility and the environment but it is also in health. In fact, scientists in Zurich have managed to find a new way to grow skin for those who need it in what could be a first-of-its-kind life-impacting manner. Scientists at the University of Zurich creating human skin the idea is to revolutionize treatment of burns, which as per the World Health Organization, is the fifth most common cause of non-fatal childhood injuries. Small child with burns, they have many hundred surgery until they are fully grown. The scar that the child has, for example, over the elbow area, this scar will not grow. This child has to go back to the hospital every year. They make a cut into the skin, into the scar, to make a new scar, to make it a little bit bigger. 
And if we can avoid that, that would be great. This technology could especially help India that reports about a million burn cases every year that need surgical intervention. We can, for the first time, uh, offer patients um, skin, which is their own skin. So we can take cells, piece of their body, bring it into our facility and make 70 times more skin for their own need. That's why we are uh, working on trying to approach the Indian market. An Indian scientist who's part of the team plans to bring this to India by 2025. Right now, we do not have a product where you also have hair growing. Mm -hmm. This could be a future possibility. That's what the basic research unit does, which I'm a part of. For this to be a success, the University of Zurich has to partner with local hospitals and has to receive active, encouraging involvement from the government. Now, this synergy between the university, hospitals and the government is what India needs to be able to eventually crack that formula of affordability. And that can only happen by actually making in India. The paralysis of the legs is a serious medical health issue in India. This technical university in Lausanne, Switzerland is doing some state-of-the-art research that is promising unprecedented and groundbreaking medical solutions. And while India may be a long way off, the good news is that the target is a product that will actually suit Indian needs. Meet TWICE, a robotic device that can help a person with paralysis of the legs to walk. It is called TWICE because it gives them a second chance. It really has enough strength to, uh, to walk, even if a person has really no strength at all, mm -hmm. and can even climb stairs. This is the first smart exoskeleton in the world that recognizes loss of balance, basically preventing falling, say developers at EPFL, Switzerland's technical university. So the main idea behind TWICE is the fact that we can make it custom to every single patient without additional costs yes. and this is completely unique. So the price that's there right now, average price of an exoskeleton which was for a full paraplegic uh, is about 70 lakh Indian rupees and what they are aiming to make it is about 20 lakh Indian rupees. So a price cut of 50 lakh, therefore it will become unique. And the advantage is that it's going to be personalized to each individual. The cost will go down further through mass production. But if you want it right now, can you get it to India? Maximum one uh, year. This project will be uh, taken in charge by a startup, okay. which will provide this exoskeleton twice and will provide it to the market. This exoskeleton is not only targeting people with paraplegia, but can maybe target other disabilities.